Welcome to this video for N4 Electro Techniques. And in this video, we'll be looking at DC generators. The first type of, of generator is the separately excited generator. And here we find that the DC supply to the field coils is completely separated from the armature. Hence, it is known as separately excited. In terms of the load characteristic curve for a separately excited generator, it's pretty much the same as the shunt generator. It has a relatively constant characteristic. However, it does tend to drop off towards the end. And the reason for this drop off is due to armature reaction and the armature volt drop. In terms of the application for separately excited generators, they are used for motor speed control systems, such as the Ward Leonard motor generator system. The definition or the term residual magnetic flux refers to the magnetic force that remains behind even when current is removed from the machine. There are three types of self-excited generators. We get the series, shunt, and compound-wound generators, and they are known for producing their own self-exciting current. Hence, they are referred to as self-excited generators. For this series wound generator, we find that the field winding is connected in series with the armature. For a generator, it's mechanical in and electrical out. For our calculations, if we are given efficiency, we use the output power. Now in a series circuit, current remains the same throughout the entire circuit. And because it's a generator, it is supplying electrical load. To calculate the EMF, it will be the terminal voltage plus IA times RA, plus the volt drop across the series winding, which is ISC times RSC. The series wound generator has a rising load characteristic curve. And the reason for it starting off at this point on the curve is because of residual magnetism. And this, we have a steep curve, but eventually it does start to drop off. Now, series wound generators are used as boosters for long transmission lines. For the shunt wound generator, we find that the field coil is connected in parallel to the armature. It's still a generator, so it's mechanical in, uh, electrical out, and it is producing current. So therefore, we have current going to the supply and a small amount of current going through the shunt winding. The load characteristic curve, very similar to the separately excited generator. It remains somewhat constant, but it tends to drop off. And the reason for this drop off is due to armature reaction, IA times RA, and a weakened shunt field. Shunt wound generators are used as charging batteries or for the supply of excitation to AC generators. In this example, we have a shunt wound generator with a shunt resistance of 200 ohms a armature resistance of 0.15 ohms, and the supply current going to the load is 45 amps, and the voltage across the terminals is 250 volts. Now, for a shunt wound generator, to calculate the armature current, IA will be equal to IL plus I shunt. We have the supply current of 45 amps. To calculate the shunt current, it will be the terminal voltage of 250 volts, divided by the shunt resistance of 200 ohms. Now, it's important to note that this voltage across the terminal is the same voltage across the field winding because they are in parallel to each other. So therefore, the armature current will be the supply current plus the shunt current, and that will give us 46.25 amps. Now, for a shunt wound generator to calculate the generated EMF, remember generators are always positive, so therefore, the generated EMF is equal to the terminal voltage plus the EMF generated across the armature assembly. The terminal voltage is 250 volts, the armature current of 46.25, multiplied by the armature resistance of 0.15, and therefore, the EMF generated will be 256.938 volts. Now, this is a DC machine. So therefore, to calculate the power, it'll be the voltage multiplied by the load current. Now, remember that for a generator, we use the output power. So we are basically calculating the output power here. It's um, mechanical in, electrical out. 
the terminal voltage of 250 multiplied by the supply current of 45 amps. That gives us 11,250 watts, or you could simplify to 11.25 kilowatts. Thank you for watching this video for DC generators.